Hello there folks. In this example video, we're going to take a Redline HMI and uh, set it up to be an OPC UA client to talk to multiple other Redline HMIs or other devices that are acting as OPC UA uh, servers. So in this case, I've got uh, this Geo 97, I call it here, that's set up to be a uh, client in this case. And what I mean by client is over here in the left on com uh, communications under protocol one here, I have selected hit the pull down, go down to OPC UA client and pick the client driver here. And I've got that set up. Now I've got it currently configured to talk to one device, but we're gonna add another one in this example. So if I click here on the protocol, I'm gonna click right here and do add additional device. It comes up by default as device 93. I like to always rename things. So I'm gonna call this one, it's actually GO9. And this one's gonna be number 94. You might ask, what do you mean by 94? Well. I have, in this case, a uh, number of HMIs that are already set up acting as OPCOA servers. So they're all set up. So in this case, we're going to set up to talk to this one right here. And it's important because uh, I, I need to know the IP address of that unit because I want Crimson software to go out and retrieve the OPCOA tags from this one that's acting as a server. So as you see down here on my local network, this unit is set up as 254.147. So back here at Crimson, right here on this unit here, uh, let me slide all the way top of the page. Right here, I'm going to put in that IP address of 192.168.254. What did I say it was 117? I've already forgot, so i got to go back and look. 147. Uh, so, uh, whoops, 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 whoops. So I'm going to put that as 147, okay? All right. I'm using all the default settings here. Everything's fine here. Now, I'm going to slide all the way down, and I am connected to the same network. My computer is on the same network. That's very important because I want to use Crimson to go out and retrieve the tags from that unit. So when I slide all the way down, I'm going to click this button here. It says Download Data Model from Device. It should go out and ask me to save it. Yep. And I'm going to call this one G09 underscore 94. Hit Save, and let's see what happens here. Okay, so it came back and said 28 nodes are discovered. I'll show you that here next. So now I've got that done. Let's go over here to data tags. And I've got a file here for tags already set up for the other one. I'm just going to be slightly lazy. I'm going to copy this folder in this case and do a paste. And then I'm going to rename this folder number 94. You'll see here in a second what happens. Okay, so if I expand this, you can see, team, that I already have a number of Integer tags, that's all these are, internal tags right now. And I got one here in a read-only folder, another one writable tags. So if I click on this guy here, you can see right here that it's already linked because I copy and pasted that folder. But I want to move this and have it go to uh, number 94. So if I hit the pull down here, I can select 94 and watch. It pops up this window here. This is what it got when I pulled that device. If I expand this, go to tags. And I'm going to go here to geo number 94. That's the one I want to use here for this guy. And I'll do this for every one of these for this example. So give me a second here. Oops, this is number 93. I'm not very good with my mouse here today. This is number four. Let's go down to right here. Boom. And this one right here is going to be number 95. Notice I have these in the read-only category. So they're coming from the server device, which is HMI number 94, and it's going to come into here. So these guys are all green. I got them read-only. Then down here, I've got some writable tags. Now, these are tags that I'm going to push out to the server to write to that device. So if I hit the pull down here and go down to this guy, and I've got these ones, the red ones are writable tags in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and select these in the same order here. Get done with these here real quick. And I'm just doing five tags for this example. All right, this should be the last one here. All right, so there we have it. I think we're set up here. Now I want to test this with this guy. So I'm going to go over here to the left and go to display pages. I'm going to go over to the right side and I'll stretch this up so we can see the names. I'm going to go to the right side and click on data tags on the right side. And I'm going to expand my GO994. 
I'm going to grab this column of read-only tags, and I'll make this a little bigger so we can see it all. And then I'll grab the write-only tags and drag them out here like this and make it a little bigger. I should have probably changed those names. But anyway, just remember these are going to be the read-only, and these will be the writable ones. Now, since I said that, since these are read-only tags, and what I mean by read-only is they're all green, means they're inputs. So give me a second to fix this or make a, a way for us to tell. I'm going to double-click on the first one, and I'm going to go to the uh, edge tab here. I'm on the edge tab, and I'm going to give it an edge of two or three pixels, and I'll change this to a green color because those tags over here are green. So I'm going to stick with green. I'll do the first one. Watch this trick. I want to add or make all these other ones the same. So I'm going to take my magic mouse and I'm going to lasso or encapsulate tags two, three, and four. I'm going to highlight or select those. Then I'm going to right click on them and I'll say copy from and I'll say copy all formatting. Notice the trailing X. I'll click on this guy. Boom. That makes all those green. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm be a little lazy. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Well, let me go ahead and click on these. These are the red ones over here. These are the writable ones. So if I double click on this, change the border of this one to red. Again, we got to make it more than zero pixels. So we'll do three. Oh, and you know what else I want to do? Because these are writable, on the data tab, I'm going to change the operation here from display only to data entry. I want you or me, the operator, to be able to change that number. And I want to see that actually happen out there at HMI number 94. So I'll make that data entry. Notice when you do that, that the background color here gets inverted. That's a telltale sign in crimson that that's set up for data entry. If it's not inverted here, then it's only display only. I'm going to make that data entry because I want the operator to be able to change that number. So I'll click OK. And I will go ahead and once again lasso these four here. And I'm going to copy all of those attributes from this one to these, use, these tags here. So I'll right click and I'll go copy from, copy all formatting. Again, notice the trailing X. It's asking you who do you want to copy from. This one right here, boom, and there you have it. Okay, I think we're good. We're good to try this out. Um, you know what I should do, team? Give me a second here. Let me go over to primitives, and up here, I'm going to put a little label to let us know that this should all be coming from Geo9 number 94. So I'll go properties, and I'll just put here pound number 94 for my text. I'll click OK, and then if you want to make this bigger, this is a trick if you click on it if you just hover over i haven't clicked but hover over where you get the blue border click one time and this ghosted box of icons comes up this button here will make it bigger and this one here will bold it okay i think we're good to try this out i'll save it before i download let me uh pull up that web server for that oh it's got something from before but that's all right let's go ahead and download this to it all right and uh let's try it let's go ahead and do shazam so, yeah, I did a different identifier. That's all right. Let's see what happens here. While it's downloading, this is our page for this unit. Let's see if it refreshes. Look, it refreshed. Okay. So, here is slave number 94 or server number 94. I got this one generating a bunch of random numbers. This data here is being pushed to the 97 unit. This is what this guy's acting as a client. So here I am on this one. If I click this field and put in, say, one, two, three, for instance, this tag is being pushed to HMI number 94. Let me go here. Look, there it is right there. If I go back to this guy and click on the other one and put in, uh, I don't know, four, five, six, for instance, hit enter go over here, and there it is. So I just easily added a device here. If I want to add another one, let me go back to Crimson here. I'm simply going to go over to the left. I'll go to communications. I'm going to click on protocol one because I want to add another server, in this case, device we're going to talk to. So I'll click once again right here where it says add additional device. Click on that over here on the left. Again, I don't like the standard default names. It'll say device one, two, three. That makes no sense to me. So in this case, I know this is Geo9 number 95. So I'm going to call this Geo9. Number 95 in this case. What do I need to know? I need to know the IP address of that unit because I need to be able to siphon out those tags. So if I go to my this unit and go to 95, I can see that on my local network, the IP address of that screen is 254.18. Let's see if I can remember that number. 
So, whoops, this program here. So, I'm going to change this number to 254.18. There you have it. And then if I slide down here to the section here where it says auto configure, I'm going to download those OPCUA tags that that server is feeding up. So, I'm going to click this button here. Again, it's important that you're on the same network. So, I'll save this as GEO9 underscore 95. In this case, I could have called it tags, but let's see. This is important right here. This is important. You got to get something back that tells me that it got those tags. Wonderful rule, wonderful thing there. Then if I go over here to data tags on the left and uh, just for quickness here, team, if I go ahead and create a new tag, I'll just do this the raw way and I'm going to hit the pull down here. I'll go down to Geo 995, expand the V1, expand the tags. I'm going to map this to this one right here. Boom. Notice it turned green. That's because that was a read only. That's okay. And uh, let's do this, team. Let's go ahead and call this underscore one. And let's go ahead and do a smart. Now, let's just go create another tag. We'll call this one tag two, for instance. Uh, we'll call this a writable tag. Write tag one. Let's call it write tag one. Okay. Notice it's blue here. Hit the pull down. Let's go down to the Geo 9. I'm still looking at the Geo9, that's correct. I'm going to click on this one, this guy right here. This is the red one. Click OK. And by default, our software does read and write. If it's writable, it came up with that, so that's great. And let's go over here, just for quickness of the video. I'm going to go to the right side, data tags. I'm going to drag this guy out down here. I'll make this be a little bigger, like so. And I'll drag this one over here like this. I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to right click and copy all the formatting from any of these. And the formatting I want to copy is the red box and the date entry. So it doesn't matter which one I click on. Boom. That'll do that. And then I'll make this guy a little bigger. All right. Maybe I should make this guy. Let me copy the format here. Any of these. Okay. These two tags should come from number 95. All right. Let's save this. I like to save. Let's go ahead and Shazam it. See what happens here, team. Go back to our little browser here. See what happens when it comes back up. We expect to see some stuff here. Or I crash and burn, but we'll try it. Let's see. Okay, so you can see the numbers coming from it there. If I go look at HMI number 95, I've got nothing here in tag one. Again, these numbers are being sent to the client. That's what it's reading here. That's the client. And then here in the client, I want to send back to this guy 987, for instance. Boom, put it there. If I go to HMI 95, there it is. Pretty easy way to add devices uh, to make Redline be an OPCUA client to multiple servers. I have other videos showing how to set up the server part, but this is how to add uh, devices to Redline as an OPU, OPC UA client. The important thing, the most important thing about this exercise is that when you're doing the devices over here, you must be attached to that network where that is in order for a crimson to be able to go out and download the data model from that device. That is very important. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the only thing, uh, I don't know if that matters in here. I think it writes automatically. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot, team. If you want to copy this database or anything, please don't be afraid to send me a note, and I'll be glad to share it with you. Hey, thanks a lot, folks. Have yourself a great day. See you later.